coming to LA anytime soon? Yeah, probably not for a minute. I got some things I gotta take care of. She-Hulk made quite the impression on viewers. Even with Marvel's reputation for producing must-see TV, Attorney at Law caught a lot of people off guard, and it all had to do with how effortlessly it mimicked comedy shows, signifying another change for the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Phase 4. The Disney Plus series returned with its second episode this week, and Jennifer Walters' adventures once again generated conversations. But that's not the only part of Attorney at Law that has the internet talking. What occurred in episode 2 of She-Hulk? That sucks. As Jennifer Walters tried to digest everything that had happened since she went green in front of everyone in the courtroom to stop Titania, the second She-Hulk movie largely dealt with the aftermath of its predecessor. She sadly lost her job as a major side effect of her heroic makeover, and as the episode progressed, she found it difficult to find a new one. That is, until GLK and H hired her to work in their brand new superhuman division. She was then requested to speak on behalf of the abomination, Emil Blonsky. Naturally, this created a conflict of interest as Blonsky, Tim Roth, attacked and tried to kill Jen's cousin Bruce Banner back in 2008's The Incredible Hulk. Bruce gave her his blessing from space, apparently, but it was clear Jen was already growing passionate about this job. That is, until she and the rest of the world discovered that Blonsky had previously broke out of prison to participate in an underground fighting organization. Where is the Hulk going in She-Hulk? I got some things I gotta take care of. Jennifer's call to Bruce resulted in another guest appearance from Mark Ruffalo, as the big green guy revealed he had no ill will towards the abomination and was happy for his cousin to take on the former villain's case. However, viewers soon found out that Hulk was taking the call from a spaceship that was, yes, hurtling through space. That spaceship is the same one, or at least the same type of aircraft, that caused the crash that ultimately turned Jen into the She-Hulk in the first episode. Described by Bruce as a saccharin Class A courier craft, its purpose is to deliver a message, and while we didn't find out what that message was, it seems that Bruce is on his way to finding out. The running theory is that it may have been confirming the birth of his son. In the Marvel comics, Hulk's time on Sacker saw him fall in love with Kyra and father a child. That child was named Scar, and he possessed abilities similar to his father's. As Hulk spent up to two years on Sacker in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as we saw in Thor. Ragnarok, it's possible that his journey into space could lead him to the discovery of his son's existence. And this could set the stage for one of Marvel's most jaw-dropping projects ever. The reported shuffle of She-Hulk's episode lineup also seems to have had a domino effect on the proper introduction of other characters, anyone who thought we'd be getting substantially more of Titania after Jen's clash with her at the end of the premiere, is going to have to make do with a very brief news report about Jamila Jamal's rampaging influencer for now that sweeps her under the rug, while the show switches its focus to Blonsky and Wong. That sucks. <laughs>